Hello, welcome back to the channel. It has been a very long time since our videos. We've got both of the biggest four-wheel drives on the channel in the garage today, in the shed. We are fitting a couple of these Red Arc Twin Pro Elite electric units because we are heading out camping. We have other news on that later down the track. So basically what is here, you've got, we've got one open already. Got your controller here. You can control how strong the brakes are. You can also push it in, I'm pretty sure to have like a emergency brake for the trailer. The kit will also come with a wiring harness, a small one. We'll also have to then make your other wiring. So you're gonna need basic electrical tools. You'll need crimpers. You'll need some terminals, possibly. You'll also then need side cutters, soldering iron if you really want. And we'll keep, we'll show you more as we go. Um, this is an encapsulated protection device kit. So you will need one of these if you're running a car with an uh, CAN bus system. So any modern four-wheel drive basically, like these cars here, there's a lot more electronics to what would be in your old patrols, land cruisers, stuff like that. So if you do have a modern four-wheel drive, you should run one of these, otherwise it will throw dramas in the, in the mix. Uh, next module, or next item is the module here. So that is the brains of the operation. So basically once this is all wired up, once the diagram shows us what to do, we will then be able to wire it all in properly and show you how it works. Unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna be able to test it properly because we have a trailer already, we've got a car trailer, but it hasn't got the Red Arc system on it. So most of your trailers, camper trailers and all that other stuff will have a braking controlling system on the trailer for, you, for it. You need to have brakes on a trailer that's over 700 kilos in Queensland, I believe. So that's pretty much every camper trailer on the market. So that's what we're looking at, making it safe to do so that we can then go out camping a bit more luxurious. So the first step will be obviously unpacking it, make sure we've got all our stuff here. The fuses that you have are a 30 amp mini blade fuse. Uh, these are ones we have bought from JCAR or you can go to Auto One, Repco, super cheap anywhere to get these fuse holders. But yeah, it'll also tell you in here what size fuse is to run right there, 30 amp. So that is the way to go. We already have most of this stuff here because of what we do for a living. So yeah, just basic stuff, wiring, tools, and your kit here. So let's get cracking into it. All right, so our first step in obviously mounting this is figuring out where we're gonna mount it. So on uh, the Mighty Ranger, our good friend Connor here has decided to mount it right here in his steady panel, which we did cover in the UHF install video. So uh, I'm assuming that Red Arc should fit into these little, Hoping little so. things. Hoping so. If not, we can just cut it like we have before. Some people mount them up in here, but I think that's where your climate control shit is. Uh, you can mount it literally anywhere on your dash. That's the best part about it, but you will have to obviously drill some holes. So we're hoping we can modify one of these already ones. Yeah, I drill this one out. Yeah. So yeah, you can buy this off the Steady website. I'm not putting a link in the description because it's already in the bloody other video. So just go to Steady, type in your car and they should have that. We aren't sponsored by Steady or Red Arc, unfortunately. So yeah, we'll get cracking into that. So they'll go drill that out now and move on. God, you're good. All right, so while Connor's down there drilling out some stuff, we'll borrow the secondary one we have here. So this is our dash mount controls for the Tow Pro. This will plug in to obviously the back and the other side, the black plug, will go into our Tow Pro controller right there. Now, this is basically most of the wiring you're gonna to have to do. This plug goes into the opposite end of your Tow Pro. Now, normally on most stuff, your red wire and your black is your positive and your negative. On this one, the black wire is your positive, your white wire is your negative, your red wire is your trailer brake trigger. So that's where you will hook up your trailer brakes to, your, um, where you'd get your signal from. So you'll have to splice in some wiring on your trailer. And then your blue is where you'd send your brake controller wires to. So that's why those ones are slightly thicker. So we will go over that and show you where to splice in and how to splice in. Be mindful that the wiring plugs and colors and shit on cars are different. So you are gonna have to probably use a test light or a multimeter to double check voltages to make sure you are connecting into the right one. So now we can return to a factory style of wiring. We're gonna now wire up our red wires that we have to our black which is obviously the power for red arc and then we've also got our black wires which will 
do to match what we have now. You can buy different colored wiring, obviously, but this is a thicker gauge wire as well, so you've got to keep that in mind because if you have thicker gauge wire here and then you run a thinner gauge, that thinner stuff will get hotter and potentially fail. It will melt. It'll melt, exactly. Everything. So we'll get cracking into this. Uh, we're going to solder it and then heat shrink it. So I might film a little bit of that, but we don't really want to film too much of that because it's pretty straightforward. Watch it shaking. Look at him. God, you're good. Precision. A few moments later. Okay, so the big man himself has now conjured the entire harness here. We've got obviously the side that goes to the back of the car and the side that goes to the front near our battery up in here. On the Ranger Danger, we have the grommet for into the cab just behind the battery here. On a Navara, it's on the opposite side. Yes or yes? Very good. All right, um, it's quite easy to see that shit. You'll look down there and you'll see like a weird rubbery looking thing. That's your grommet. You can make a hole in that to pull your stuff through. I think we covered that when we did the UHF install. So pretty straightforward. Now, whoop, now, now, so our next step's obviously gonna be running wires. We need to figure out where we're gonna put our Red Arc tow box thingy in the cab. Then we're gonna run, plug this in, run this now through our firewall, down the back of the car and obviously to our batteries. Don't forget, we're gonna also need to put our fuses in here as well. And then once that's done, we should be good to go. So we've now gone through the grommet. There it is down there for those who think I'm lying. We've pushed it through. We we'll use a zip tie and some other two core to get it through. You can use a, a snake, like a um, electrical snake. You can buy it from an electrical shop just to feed it through. So that's been done now, so that's good. We'll run one through the back along the chassis rail here or underneath we'll probably follow some brake lines or something to follow through to the back. And the other one wire into the front, obviously, nice and easy. Then we'll get to the back here, which we've already done on the Navara, which is no longer in the garage. Uh, and we have to then wire in, change this plug because it has to now suit having the trailer plug on there. So we'll go through that now. So the lads are down here running their wiring along the chassis. We're getting down to the business end on this end. It's pretty straightforward setup, so um, as long as you follow the instructions, it's not that hard to do. So don't be don't be too daunted by the task. All right, so here we have the Ranger trailer plug. There's a fair bit going on in here compared to a normal one. Uh, most of them is either a flat seven, which is your top one here, or it's like a round seven. This one also has another five additional ones. So I'm not too sure about that is, but I'm sure one of you Ranger blokes will tell me. Basically what we need to do is take the wiring out of this one and hook it up to our current one so that it will work and add in this wiring right here. So we'll go through how to do that just now. All right, so it's starting to thunder here. So the dogs are carrying on. Basically right now we're fitting up the diode. So what that does is it stops the caravan or whatever you're towing back feeding into the car and cuts off your cruise control. Any vehicle with camber. Yes, any vehicle with the camber. So which we did mention earlier. So a diode basically is like a one way uh, valve, but for electronics. So it'll allow electricity one way, but we'll not let it the other way. So it's very good, especially if you're doing your own jobs. If you're an electrical person and you obviously know what a diode is, um, but yeah, so basically you get that. Red Arc already has the diagram on how to do it, which is right there. That will come with your kit. It'll tell you all about it. So we've just got one on the phone, so it's a bit easier for us to do. So it'll tell you what you need to wire it into. Like it says there, you've got your trailer light wiring, and then you've got your trailer brake stop, which is on your light pin six. So like I said before, you've got one to seven here, and that's where you'll just plug it into. Uh, and we'll get the soldering iron, which we have here, and we will solder two together. Now you've got the orange one from your diode here, and then you'll go to your brake lights on your factory harness, I believe, which is right here there. That way, obviously, you're feeding in to allow your signal to go in to activate your brakes, but it won't backfeed through your car's wiring to then set off other issues. So it's, a, it's necessary for what you need to do. But Red Arc really explained a bit better. All right, so I don't know if you can hear me too well because of the, the rain. So we've now soldered. We're going to wrap this in heat shrink and all that nonsense. That is into the diode here. The red one from the diode, you've got two red ones. You've got red, orange, and red. Obviously, your diagram will tell you which way to go. We've got one spliced into going into your tow pro wire, which was those red and the other wires we were talking about later, which we made the harness for. Then we've also then done our orange into the red which goes into your car's harness, which we discussed. And then finally, this last third wire here will then go into your trailer plug. So basically, 
those two red ones are linked together but the diode is stopping it from back feeding pretty straightforward but yeah you'll need that so we'll keep on going put it all back together pretty straightforward if you haven't seen a trailer plug before they're, they're pretty straightforward it'll tell you what to do um, like I did say before most ones don't have this second set of five on top um, the rangers seem to which is which is nice for you ranger boys I guess so yeah we'll put all the covers back on from factory that it could be just there. that could be an aftermarket thing uh, don't forget also when putting these back together to put this little bridge plate in it locks them in place that way you're not going to rip out all this wires here so uh yeah and all these wires should be universal it'll tell you on the plug anyway which way to wire it. it'll have like trailer plug you know left right brake park all that stuff sometimes reverse. sometimes reverse as well and they'll sometimes have an extra one in for this exact application that we're doing so we'll put all that together whack it on back up on the holder up there and then move back into the cab all right we have the dogs in here because it's it's raining Big Conroy here has gotten into the glove box, just running wires as usual. Uh, we have gone through from under here where the firewall is, we've run our wires underneath. Now we have the harness here that we were discussing earlier with the uh, that Toe Pro box. So we're going to try and get that up to here where our little console is. Alright, so I don't think we've covered this side of it, it's pretty straightforward. You've got to power positive and a negative, wire them straight to your battery or to an accessory source. Um, you can get that from your fuse box down in there check your operator's manual it'll tell you which one is a constant power and which one is an accessory power uh, so we've done all that now that's all sorted um, we'll go into the car and then we'll see how it looks from in here Ooh. all right so there is our red arc sorted good to go uh, if we turn on the key, we turn on the key it should light up or it might not light up because the car's not actually hooked up to a trailer so uh yeah that's done so as you can see you've got your dial it goes from one to ten or maybe i think it goes from two to nine now there you go sorry it goes from yeah one to ten so that'll be your different levels and then you can also push it in there oh, there we go it goes green so yeah those are all your different settings pretty straightforward you won't obviously know what adjustment you'll want on that until you're obviously towing to see what the whatever your towing is doing so um, we're not going to do a video how to test it because it is raining and it is it is night time. So uh, we're just in the middle of having having a couple of brewskis. So we finished all this off. We've got another car to do so far now. Um, but yeah, two down, one to go. I think the average time to set this up was about two hours. That included making the harnesses. It can be done way quicker. Just we're filming obviously and we had to make our own harnesses. I'm pretty sure Red Arc provides you a harness as well. So you can do that if you want. But um, but yeah, so that's sort of that's sort of what you want to do. Like I said, this can go anywhere you want on the car, as long as that's easy to get to. Uh, and I'm pretty sure, like I said, you can push that in as an emergency to make your brakes lock on in case your trailer sways. Anyway, that's all I can think about for this video right now. So hope you've enjoyed a shorter video. I know it's been a while since we posted, but uh, had a bit on, been a bit busy. I'll try and do a little update on the channel very shortly because there is some big news coming and I don't think some of you are going to like it. So uh, we'll do a video maybe next week or something. I'll try and get out there depending on the weather on the weekend uh, and I'll get that shot and I'll put it up on YouTube for you. So yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. As always, keep on boosting and we'll see you in the next video.